It's well known that New York was a main hub for the Underground Railroad. But what was life like for a freedom seeker? CBS 2's Steve Overmeyer takes us inside a historic safe haven. The fear, the hope, the uncertainty, and the sense of safety are all part of this story. We're underneath Plymouth Church in Brooklyn. 170 years ago, this was the path to freedom. As you walk forward, watch your head because the ceilings get lower and lower and turn to your right at that first arch. Melissa Collum is a historian at Plymouth Church. They've granted us access to a station on the Underground Railroad. Long before actual trains course through the city, Brooklyn was open farmland and home to many anti-slavery churches. People were coming across the East River from Manhattan on ferries, and in the winter, the river would be filled with ice. So it really was a separate place from Manhattan. Plymouth Church was founded by Quakers who played a huge role in the formation of the Underground Railroad. A famous conductor of the Underground Railroad, Charles B. Ray, was a minister at an African-American church in Brooklyn and would bring people here for safety. Beneath this holy place, in a sub-basement behind a steel door, freedom seekers would find their sanctuary. This is so low. And you can feel it's a pretty uncomfortable space. They'd stay for one or two nights. They would get some rest. They would get some food. You can imagine how hungry people would be on this journey. Remember, this was 30 years before the electrical age would begin. So travel would be under the cover of darkness. So it's a misconception to think that once people got to New York, they were safe. The streets of Manhattan were filled with bounty hunters. So this is really dangerous. But in this stonewalled room with a dirt floor and no windows, history comes to life. I've had people say that they can feel this sense of security in this space. This foundation is from 1823 and it's still standing. So you feel this sense of being protected. After months of travel, living in fear, relying on both black and white supporters, they'd arrive here. Of course, there's no documentation of who came through or how many, but they all shared the same belief in a possible future. You could only imagine what they had to feel like this was the only way for them to make it in the world. It's a really special combination of risk and hope. It's an enormous risk for everyone involved, but there also is a sense of hope and possibility that there still is life worth living and taking that risk to get there is worth it. Because living in extraordinary times amplifies the call for exceptional people. In Brooklyn, Steve Overmeyer, CBS2 News. My goodness, if those walls could talk, what so a story. So true, so true. But I love how she said it's a combination of risk and hope. Right. That's so true. Extraordinary story. That's